Hello, my name is Abdul Rahim and I'm the teaching assistant of the uh, Automatic Control Systems 1 course. Normally we had planned to make several experiments with you at the Flight Mechanics and Control Lab. However, due to this uh, uh, COVID-19 pandemic, we are passing through a rough time. So, uh, as of this week, METU and hence our department uh, started to distance education. So, uh, we also uh, make these experiments uh, uh, online. So, I will perform the experiments inside of you and I will uh, uh, take uh, some video recordings and uh, with the data, I will also share the data with you. So, you're going to perform, uh, make your uh, lab reports based on this data. So, first let me introduce you our lab. Uh, there are several experimental setups here, like helicopter experiments. <coughs> also, there is a uh, magnetic levitation experiment. This is one of our experiments that we are going to perform this semester. Also, uh, there is servo trainer experiment. This will be our the first experiment. So, and there is another one, which is ball and beam, As you see. All of these experiments are single input and single output experiments. So, there is another one, which is multi-input, multi-output, ball and plate experiment. So, here is the lab. So, today, we are going to perform the first experiment, the servo trainer, with you. First, let's start with introducing the experimental setup. Here is the main hardware. As you can see, there are several panels. The above panel here is just related with introducing some non-linearities to the system. So, we are not going to use this above panel. Here is the rotating wheel, which is composed of some uh, heavy metals, I think. It's connected to the shaft of DC motor. And uh, here is the screen of tachometer. So you can read the rotational speed of this wheel in terms of RPM, which means rotations per minute. Also. The shaft, the, uh, the, the other tip of the shaft of DC motor is connected to the gearbox, which has some reduction rate, which is written here. So, uh, you can read the output shaft in terms of degrees, so you can arrange uh, the position of the shaft here. Uh, however, we are not going to use uh, uh, this servo part of the experiment, so the switch will stay at zero position. In the lab sheet, you are going to see that there is another version of the setup, which has some analog integrated circuits. However, with this setup, you don't have to uh, arrange some analog circuits. Instead of, you can generate any kind of circuits by computer and convert the signals to the analog signals from digital and implement it to the plant. So, thanks to this box, we can perform the communication between the computer and the plant. By this USB cable, we take the digital signals from the computer and also there is electrical ground, which means zero volts, and it is connected to the ground of the plant, as you can see here. Also. We take digital voltage signals 
from the computer and transform or uh, convert it to the analog and feed it to the input of the system as a voltage source. It feeds the magnetic coil of the DC motor and starts to rotate the wheel. Also, this ground and voltage probes are inputs to the system. However, uh, we, sh we should get some outputs. For example, the rotational speed of the wheel here. And as you can see, the omega, it gives us the output of the system in terms of RPM and we take it here as analog signal and convert it to the digital and feed it back to the computer here. So we perform the communication between the computer and the experimental hardware. Now let's introduce the digital interface of the system. You can see the overall system here. You can apply some input voltages to the system. Also there is a unity feedback. We take the motor speed output as feedback and insert it here. Here we can reads the error value in terms of voltages also here is the controller block which is composed of proportional and integrator gains also the plant is placed here the servo trainer also you can read the input voltage value here now in this graph we can see input voltage and the output value in terms of motor speed. Now uh, let's start the system. Let's see what happens. Now the zero volt is given to the system. You see as I start to increase the voltage source, voltage input the motor starts to rotate as you can see you, you can read the RPM value from the screen as I start to increase the voltages it starts to turn more and you can see With 5 volt input, it rotates with 448 RPM. Now, let's turn it off. Here also, you see that only proportional controller is connected. The integrator is not connected. So you see there is a uh, steady state error. Since the proportional controller uh, only may not give you uh, the result without steady state error. Please open your lab sheets that I send you and read it before starting the experiment. In this experiment, the object is to investigate the effect of proportional and integral control upon the servo motor speed control loop in terms of steady state errors, disturbance rejection, and transit response. Now we start to the first part. We're going to investigate the effect of integral action on steady state errors. 
as I previously did. I apply to the system which has only proportional controller. Apply 4 volts, 4 volts for example. Let's apply here 4 volts. You see, there is a steady state error in terms of input, in terms of output, sorry. It, it is approximately 2 volts, you can see. It is 4 volts and it is almost 2 volts. So now we are going to connect the integrator. Of course, always we should reset the integrator before connecting the system. Here, firstly, the gain is let's start with 0 0.1. Let's reset it and connect. So you see the system starts to reduce the error value you see I just cut off the circuit so again the steady state error comes here now let's start uh, le let's use uh, 10 times of the gain of integrator this time one and reset it and insert you see this time the steady state steady state error reduces faster you see again break up the circuit this time for example use five what happens let's see let's reset the integrator and just connect it again you see too much integrator gain gives some oscillations this was the first part of the experiment let's stop it and let's let's draw the graph that we and here is the input and output graph from the beginning of the experiment the black line shows the error value we can save this graph and I'll, I'll share this data with you For the second part of the experiment, we are going to investigate the gains of integral and proportional controllers. Now, at the beginning, we set the voltage value to the 5, we added a square wave generator and summed them together, and then the, uh, uh, the overall input value will switch will be switched between 4 volts and 6 volts also we adjust the gain value to 1 and the integrator gain value to 3 and that's okay let's run the simulation let's run the experiment you see there are some oscillations Now it is 4 volts. Again, there are some oscillations. Now let's reduce the gain value to 0 0.1. As you see, as you can observe, the amount of the oscillation is increased. So as you can guess, if we further decrease the proportional gain value, what happens? 
the oscillations will be more increased. Let's observe what happens. Now we can observe the changes. As you see, the oscillations last more. So that was the effect of the proportional control gain value. Now that's enough. We can plot the results. You see, at the beginning, there were some oscillations as the proportional controller gain is decreased the amount of oscillations are increased you see uh, you can ask why at the beginning this oscillation is too much because we are starting from zero value suddenly that's why the oscillation is bigger now adjust the proportional gain to 1 and the integrator gain to 0 0.5 okay so let's run the experiment since we decrease the gain of integrator the oscillations are decreased You see, let's make the value as one. You can see, you can observe a little bit oscillation. Let's increase the gain value to the 5. What happens? As you guess, the oscillations will be increased. Now, let's make it 10. So, so the problem is to find the optimum gains. So, what is the mean of optimum? So, it depends on your needs. It depends on your needs. We are required to find the gain values of the integral and proportional controllers for the given natural frequency of omega n equals to pi over 2 radians per second. Since we didn't, uh, since we didn't perform the second experiment, so we are going to take the open loop gain value g1 as 1 and the period value or time constant value 1.5 so we are going to find the integrator and proportional control of gain values now we apply these formulas for example for uh, ki ki equals to 1.5 times pi over 2 squared over 1 which 
is equal to approximately 3.7. Since the damping ratio is not aff affecting the calculation of Ki, so all of the values are 3.7. Yes. To find Kp values, we apply the same given formula two times damping ratio times pi over 2 times 1.5 times minus 1 over 1. So we find the values as 3.71, 2.5, 3.71, 2.5, 3.71. These are the gain values for the desired natural frequencies and damping, damping ratios. For the third experiment, we are going to investigate the response of the system for the previously calculated values of integral and proportional controller. These values are based on for the desired natural frequency of pi over 2 and for several damping ratios. For the damping ratio 1, we calculated Ki value as 3.7 and integrate a proportional gain value as 3.71. Let's run the experiment. Aha, something different. See? Yes. Let's draw it. Yes. For the next values, we have the same integrator value with different Kp values, this time for 0 0.8 damping ratio, we had 2.77, okay, let's run it. Okay. Let's throw. And let's investigate this time 1 over 1.83 yes so we have the same ki value let's run it And that was finally we are going to observe the gain values of the damping ratio 0 0.4 uh, we find we already found the kp value as 0 0.88 and let's run the experiment As you see, 
the oscillations are increased and the rise time is decreased I'm sorry increased yes finally we have completed our experiment uh, I will post the uh, data that I obtained through this experiment uh, I will send them to you and you're going to prepare a lab report I'll also define the t details about lab reports and the homework uh, please uh, stay in contact check your emails